Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from alloytutors.com and welcome to this video on orbitals and energy levels. So in this video we're going to look at the different types of orbitals that make up uh, atoms and we're also going to look at where they or where them orbitals fit in with energy levels as well and we're going to show you an energy level diagram. And we're also going to link that with electron configurations of elements and help explain why we have some very funny electron configurations in particular chromium and copper uh, which was mentioned in the video on electron configuration so we're going to start by looking at the different orbitals and as you can see on the right hand side there we have s orbitals p orbitals and d orbitals so we're going to start with the s orbital the s orbital is spherical in shape and it can hold two electrons maximum inside it and the orbital basically shows us the uh, where the path of an electron will be so they would orbit in a spherical shape the p orbitals are slightly different you actually have three sub orbitals that make up the full p orbital uh, and they're given very clever names i suppose um, which is px py and pz and the only difference is the orientation of the actual orbital so the uh, px orbital is lying horizontally the py orbital uh, lies vertically and the pz orbital actually lies at an angle but if it was in 3d it'd be kind of pointing towards you and all three of these uh, will combine to form the full p orbital as you can see over there on the right uh, now each one of these sub orbitals so px py bz can hold two electrons and that's why we've got two lobes it's like a figure of eight and because we have three of them that means we can uh, hold a maximum of six electrons in the p orbital because each each one are occupying each electron um so each orbital could occupy two electrons and the other type is the um D orbital and the D orbital uh, there are five of them uh, again each of the orbitals or the suborbitals can hold two electrons each two times five means you get ten electrons in total in the uh, D orbitals okay so we're going to take these orbitals now and we're going to link them to an energy level diagram now you can see here that some of the orbitals have um, we've labeled them here we've got S's and P's and we've also got D orbitals as well and we're going to use this diagram to um, go through a particular example, which is calcium. And we're also going to use it to explain the electron configurations of chromium and copper. So we're going to start by um, at the bottom here. Now, you can see calcium has got electron configuration of 1s2. That's the first one. Uh, and then it goes on. We're going to fill them up. Now, there's one person that we need to mention here in particular. And this is called Aufbau, the Aufbau principle. And basically, he said that electrons must fill up from the lowest energy orbital upwards. Um, so in this case, we have to start at 1s because this is of lowest energy. And as we go up, uh, they get um, higher in energy. You can see here, some of the energy levels actually get quite squashed up towards the top here. And this is gonna be significant when we go through transition metals. So we're gonna start by putting in our electrons and we draw electrons using arrows. So we're gonna start with an electron in here and another one. Now, if you notice, we've got one arrow pointing up and one arrow pointing down. That basically just tells us the spin of the electron. We don't need to be too concerned about that. Uh, but basically, there was another person called Hunt. And uh, Hunt actually came up with this idea, or, or basically came up with a theory that said that electrons, if they're pairing up, they must spin in opposite directions. So you can see here that we've got opposite spins and we use the arrows to represent that. Okay, so if we keep on going, so we've done the 1s2 uh, and then we come on to 2s2 so we fill the electrons in there so again only two electrons in that s orbital uh, and then we come on to 2p6 now when this fills up we actually fill them up singly first so it's one two three now it tells us six so we need six electrons in total in here but they fill up singly and again uh hunt came up with another idea so he's quite uh, quite busy at this, I suppose, um, and he said that electrons will occupy a suborbital singly first, then they will pair up. And the reason for this is because of electron repulsion. If you try and put an electron together um, when there is no need for them to be together, in other words, they can occupy another suborbital, then they won't do it. And that's because, like I say, of this electron repulsion. Um, and I suppose it's a, a little bit like buses. So if you take, uh, if you go onto a bus, everybody sits on a seat and they prefer to have a seat for themselves. And uh, they might put the shopping next to them, etc. Now, only when every seat has been occupied, 
then if another person comes on the bus, then they have to sit next to somebody else if they want a seat. Um, now, people are, for whatever reason, they're quite reluctant to sit in a, next to another person uh, or a stranger. And it's a little bit like electrons as well. So they will sit singly first, then they'll pair up. Now, because we have six here, we have no alternative but to put three more electrons in there to form 2p6. Okay, so we'll tick that one off there. Okay, and then if we keep on going, we'll get 3s2, which is there, and then 3p6. Again, we fill them singly first and then pair them up. And then uh, actually we get to 4s2. Now you notice the 4s2 orbital, if you've seen the electron configuration video, uh, the 4s orbital is lower in energy than the 3d. And you can see it in this diagram here. So that's why that one fills up first um, before the 3d orbital. Uh, and this is the electron configuration of calcium. Okay, so what we're going to do is finally look at the transition metals. We're going to look at chromium and copper. Uh, now, these are a little bit strange. Um, you can see here, here's the electron configuration of chromium. Now, argon, we've written this as an electron configuration of the noble gas argon, which effectively means um, we have this configuration. So this is for argon here. So it means, basically means we have the 3P. Now, if you look here, it should be 3D54S1 and not 3D44S2. Because what you would think is actually if we go on along to, uh, to chromium, if you look on your periodic table, you'd be able to see this. Chromium, you would think if it follows this simple rule, it would fill up like this and you'd have four in there. But actually what happens with chromium is one of the electrons from the 4S orbital actually goes in to occupy the unoccupied 3D orbital. Again, this is lower in energy. Uh, having a half-filled 3D orbital is lower in energy than having a paired electron in the 4S orbital. And this is because the orbitals, the suborbitals, are actually very, very close to each other in energy. So therefore, the electron can migrate quite readily between the 4S and the 3D orbital. So chromium has a 3D5 4S1 configuration. Uh, and if we go on to the next one, which is copper, you can see copper here, we've got the electron configuration of argon, uh, and it's actually 3D10, 4S1, not 3D9, 4S2. Again, for the same reason. So if I just show you if it was this, 3D9, 4S2, so we go 1, 2, 3, 4. Actually, the electron that was in the 4S now again flips up into this other shell here. Now, this is because, again, it's lower in energy and to have a full 3D subshell uh, than to have a half empty one or one with a gap in there and have a full 4S one. So this is the reason why we actually form this configuration, which is 3D10, 4S one. And then if we continue, then the electron sits in the 4S and then we go on to 4P if we have to. But that's really, really, really important for you to know that. Uh, and just on a final note uh, is when we ionize these elements, uh, especially transition elements, we actually remove an electron from the 4s orbitals first, then we remove from the 3d orbital. So, for example, um, if we were to take, for example, this is um, copper, if we were to take copper 2 plus, um, actually the configuration of copper 2 plus would be you would take this bit away, this electron from the 4s first, then you would take one from there. So, copper 2 plus would actually be 3d9, it wouldn't have any electrons in the 4s. Uh, now, this is a bit weird uh, because actually when we're ionizing or removing electrons, um, the 4S is actually, uh, the 3D, the 4S, sorry, is of lower energy. And so we remove electrons from there, uh, sorry, of higher energy. And so we remove the electrons from the 4S orbital first before the 3D orbital. And that's really, really important. Um, and there is more on that as well on the um, electron configuration video uh, within the playlist. So make sure you have a look at that and see what I mean. But um, as long as you know these uh, configurations for chromium and copper are slightly different and you can order them uh, in terms of the energy level diagrams and talk about orbitals in terms of energy, uh, then you should be fine. But that's it. Bye bye.